Joining us now to assess preparations for the governorship election in Oshun State is the Secretariat Coordinator, Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room, Agyankwe Onyema. Good to have you on Newsday. Hello, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Now, I'd just like to ask your assessment so far, especially in terms of INEX preparation for the Oshu state election. Two um, issues they had concerns about some weeks ago, I would even say some days ago, were vote buying and security. In your opinion, uh, have, those two, have those two elements been tackled adequately ahead of tomorrow's election? Um, I think for vote buying, we're not going to know until um, we go out into the field. Um, usually that happens around the polling units. And um, one of the ways that that can be you know, reduced is to put um, the voting cubicles in a way that people can't see what people are voting or what the voters or who they are voting for. So it is our hope that um, the cubicles be well placed and um, people will not be able to see that they are being, um, who they are voting for. And you know, that reduces the ability to say that I voted for you and then go to collect the money. Uh, again, I was asking about security <clears throat> as well. Okay, so for now, we don't have any security concerns. Um, a few days ago, there were political rallies in Oshobo, and I think that um, sort of raised the issue of concerns because there were a lot of political um, party thugs. Um, but that has reduced. Today, everywhere seems really peaceful. Um, the police has said they have deployed. We're hoping that that deployment will be effective in a way that you know, um, the flashpoints are being taken care of. Um, we've been around the city today and no one has complained of being harassed or anything. We did have a few skirmishes um, three days and two days ago, but nothing so far has happened today. And I think we are happy about that. Now, since you brought up the issue of political rallies, I'd like us to talk about the rhetorics from the candidates so far. Have they been measured and encouraging or have they been maybe incisive and div divisive? Um, that's one of the issues we raised um, today in our statement. Um, the rhetorics have actually been a bit divisive. Um, this comes from the last election that happened here in 2018. It feels like there's a score to settle. And um, it's something that we need to watch out for. Um, the PDP candidates also mentioned that they were denied using um, the stadium for the political rally. That, again, is something that we do not feel is right. Um, there should be an, a level playing field for all parties to use state facilities. And so um, we, we would like to call on political parties and the candidates to actually bring down the rhetorics. Um, the people of Oshun seem really motivated and want to go out to vote, but these are the sort of things that will scare them from coming out if they think that um, they are desperate to get the, the, the governorship. And it has been historically, um, the narrative has been, it's been a bit of a grudge match since the last election season. And just like you said, um, we, we're aware that uh, there's quite a high percentage of individuals who have their PVCs. Uh, speaking of voter apathy and the security situation as well, do you expect that they will brave those situations and go to the polls? Sorry, I didn't hear that. I'm talking about the amount of people that you would expect to uh, turn up at the polls tomorrow in terms of voter apathy. Okay. With everything that's going on, do you think this will um, discourage them from going to the polls, or is it something that can be overlooked, hopefully? Um, I think if the rhetorics continue, it may discourage people. Um, usually, this sort of elections, um, off-cycle elections, and in the past, I have, this is the third election I'm observing in Oshun State. Um, people tend to come out towards the afternoon when they see that early morning has gone on very well. 
So um, we expect to see that little trickles of people in the morning, except, of course, um, people really feel that they are safe, and then you see large numbers of people. So, but typically, people tend to come out in little numbers, and then towards maybe 10, 11, you see large crowds of people when they feel that um, the area is safe. Um, we hope that the people who do not feel scared to come out, um, they seem really motivated as at now, and um, I hope that this continues up until tomorrow. Well said. Well, again, um, one thing that is glaring is the spike when it comes to COVID-19. From what we understand, it has gone up by 324% in the country. That's uh, to uh, Nigeria as a whole. I'm just wondering if you are, con if you, from what you're observing, if there are any measures in place to enforce COVID-19 guidelines in terms of social distancing, wearing masks, and whatnot. Do you anticipate that it will be enforced tomorrow? Um, yes, we do. Um, it's one of the things that we are going to observe on. Um, adherence to COVID-19 protocols. Um, in the last election, that, that wasn't very strong. We're hoping that it can be better in this election. And as soon as I got into um, Oshobo, that was one of the things I was warned about. Um, a colleague said, you do know that COVID-19 has risen. We have to be careful even as we're going out. So it's one of the things that we're also going to put across to the REC when um, we see him and speak to him and say that we expect that INEC will stick to these guidelines. So what are the major issues that you think voters will be focusing on before casting their ballots? What factors do you think will decide who they will vote for tomorrow? Um, as at this time, we do know that the political, the, the two major parties are presenting the same candidates. Um, I'm sure some people will want to retain the governor as, as you know, he, he is now and he's running again. Maybe some people will want a change. Um, I, I don't know what the people of Oshun are looking out for, and we're hoping that it will be clear tomorrow when we go to the field if they want the incumbent to remain or they want a change in um, political party and their governor. It's certainly going to be very interesting to watch. But um, speaking of the process of voting, we saw in the AKT elections a few months back very few instances where the BVAS system was malfunctioning, that they were able to get it back up and running. I'm just wondering if you've seen anything that could um, show that they are prepared for such a situation to happen and to fix it if and when it does happen. Yeah, I think in Ekiti, what happened was um, polling units where there were large crowds of people. Um, so larger polling units, um, the beavers worked slower because there were more people. Um, for those polling units where there were smaller numbers of voters, what we saw was that it worked a lot better than it had worked in the FCT and um, Anambra governorship election. Um, so we are hoping that the deployment of machines, of the beavers, actually reflects where there are large voters. And I mean, that would be a good way to make the, um, the system quicker. And it's one of the things we're going to look out for when we go on the field tomorrow, because we're hoping that as we head to the 2023 elections, um, the beavers function optimally, because we are going to be deploying to 36 states and the FCT on a particular day. So we, uh, I'm not sure there will be so many extra machines to be able to deploy where the functionality is low. Wonderful. Now let's do a quick check. So we have 1.5 million voters that have collected their PVCs and are expected to come out tomorrow. Police have announced restrictions. NSCDC has also said it will be deploying over 11,000 officers to cover the well over 3,000 polling units. And EFCC has been called upon to arrest vote buyers. Would you say there's anything pending or missing from these right now that you'd like to see to make tomorrow as smooth as possible? Nothing. Um, we are relying on the assurances of both INEC and the security agencies because those are the two main um, agencies that are in charge of the elections. On one side, on the conduct, and the other side, the conduct of security personnel. 
So both, of, both parties, we've met with both parties at Situation Room. We've had um, high assurances that they are ready and prepared for these elections. The IGP announced that a special unit has been set up to um, tackle votes by trading, as it were. So we are watching out for that tomorrow, and we are hopeful that everything will go on well. Now, we know that all political parties contesting in this governorship election have signed a peace accord, but I'd like to know what the mood is like generally among the candidates, among the voters, even among the civil society organizations. Is there optimism, you know, that the elections will be free and fair? Um, there's always optimism for us um, because we look at the preparations and if there are any issues, we raise them before, um, before the election day. Right now, um, we are really, really expectant that things will go well. The peace accord was signed. Um, we've also called on the candidates to respect that, especially as we are a bit, they are the only um, parties that we are worried about um, at this time, their rhetorics. But, you know, everything seems peaceful now. Um, we don't know what happens um, tomorrow, but we're really, really hopeful that things, you know, remain as they are and get even better for people to come out and vote. Well, it seems we've exhausted the uh, checklist of things to go over just in case um, we've missed anything. But I did think of one that uh, little of us have any control over, and that is Mother Nature. Huh? And that is, of course, unless you have someone holding up the rain. We know that it's been quite rainy down here in yeah. Lagos. I'm not sure about what it's like in Oshun State, but that is the one thing that would probably make people feel a little bit more comfortable about staying at home and not going to the polling units. Also, I'm not sure what the infrastructure is like around these 3,000 plus, uh, uh, 300 plus polling units across the, uh, the state are if they have accommodations for inclement rainy weather. Um, so the past two, three days has been really sunny. Um, there's been no sign of rain. It's a good thing you raised that. Um, we hope that it remains like this. Um, as most polling units are supposed to be in public areas, typically a lot of them are in schools. And um, we're hoping that when the rain starts, and I'm not saying that it's, um, it will rain, but of course, you've just pointed out that we're in rainy season. And we're hoping that if it does happen, there will be some shade for people to run under. And um, we actually did raise to INEC in our preparations to think about putting canopies for, for people in polling units so that if this happens, they have somewhere to go under. Well said. Now, the INEC Resident um, Electoral Commission uh, did say on Thursday when he appeared on a, on a program on the station that it wasn't, it wasn't INEX responsibility to curb vote buying because um, there have been concerns that a significant percentage of the electorate in Oshu is poised to sell their votes based on poverty. I'm just wondering who you think or um, would be able to step in at this point if the commissioner is saying it's not our next responsibility right now. So who is responsible to ensure that this probably doesn't happen tomorrow? Well, I think the security have a higher responsibility, um, but that does not stop INEC personnel from um, actually pointing out to the security agencies that vote buying is going on. Usually what we see is that all of them just turn the blind eye um, when that happens around the polling units. But typically, um, vote buying is an electoral, electoral offense. Um, that falls within the purview of um, security agencies. But then again, it doesn't stop INEC personnel from alerting them to it. I still on the issue of vote buying. Do you feel that there's been enough sensitization of the electorate not to indulge in this? And also, is there enough deterrent for political parties not to participate in vote trading? I don't think there's enough deterrent uh, because people have not been punished sufficiently in the past for vote trading. Um, this brings us to a larger issue of having an electoral offences commission that can tackle this. Um, vote trading has been going on for a long time. 
um, nobody has been used as an example to stop others from continuing in it. Um, on sensitization, I mean, coming into the states, there were lots of um, jingles on the radio. A lot of civil society organizations, especially those based in this area, have um, carried out sensitization. Even the parties have asked people to come and vote for them. So um, we, we leave it to the citizens. Um, we've said it's in their hands. They are the ones who will come out and elect the new leader. If they are willing to collect just a few nairas to um, elect their leader, then we leave it to them. But then again, we, there needs to be a stronger message you know, for future elections. Thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. We do appreciate your contribution on the program.